Yes, hello guys, good evening. So I hope all of you are here, right? Okay, so last class we were doing thermodynamics. What was the last thing we were discussing? One second. Okay, so we had uh, discussed till work done, right? Formula of work done we have seen. Okay, thermodynamic quantity till work we have discussed. Yes, cyclic process like work done in cyclic process, right? Okay. Okay, the next thermodynamic quantity we have, all of you write down. The next thermodynamic quantity is um, that is heat, write down. Okay, so next write down thermodynamic quantity we have. Heat. Heat is represented by Q, okay? Small Q, capital Q you can write, it is represented by Q. Okay, so what is heat? Heat is again a form of energy, correct? It is basically the energy transfer which takes place because of the difference in temperature, form of energy. So it is the energy transfer takes place because of because of difference in difference in temperature okay so whenever you place a hot object a hot body and cold body together in contact right then energy transfer from hot to cold body happens right so what happens suppose we have an object We have an object at two different temperature and these two are conducted, uh, sorry, connected through a conducting wire. Okay, this one is at temperature T1, this one is at temperature T2. If T1 is greater than T2, here we have only one option. So since I have given the arrow over here, this heat will transfer from this object to this object only when T1 is greater than T2, okay? This transfer takes place unless the temperature in the two object becomes equal, okay? Till then, the transfer of heat from hot to cold object takes place, okay? Right. See, we had the assumption in case of work done, like work done, work done by the system is negative, work done 
on the system is positive similarly we have worked we have assumption or convention we can say in case of heat also and what is that con convention the convention is heat heat given to the system given to the system or we can also say the same thing as heat absorbs by the system right system is absorbing heat okay heat given to the system or heat absorbs by the system is always positive and heat released by the system is always negative so this is the sign convention we have okay like we have for work done we have sign convention over here for heat copy this down done okay next you see uh heat capacity and under this only we don't have new topic sub topic is heat only so we have two three terms over here one is total heat capacity total heat capacity total heat capacity is the amount of heat required it is the amount of heat required to change the temperature the temperature by 1 degree celsius means per unit change in temperature okay 1 degree or we can have rise we can have decrease so per unit change in temperature the amount of heat required is called the total heat capacity the unit of this is is joule is the unit of energy kelvin is the unit of temperature right here we have change in temperature so whatever unit you take that does not make any difference joule per kelvin we can write okay now this total heat capacity is classified now into two categories two types of total heat capacity we can have the first one is molar heat capacity molar heat capacity molar heat capacity it is c acha i'll change the notation so that it will be easier for you to understand molar heat capacity suppose i am taking as cm right you will get this notation in some book in uh, like most of the book they simply write it as c but why i have taken this as different you will understand this after some time molar heat capacity you see it is the same thing amount of heat required to change the temperature by 1 degree celsius of 1 mole of substance just you need to add okay so molar heat capacity is for 1 mole of substance so definition would be amount of heat required to change the temperature the temperature by 1 degree celsius of 1 mole of a substance so if you take 1 mole of a substance 
so it is molar heat capacity if you look at the unit here for molar heat capacity the unit is obviously the energy is joule per mole kelvin because of one mole got it the second one we have is specific heat capacity specific heat capacity see it is exactly same but the only difference is here we are taking cs we represent this as right here we are taking 1 gram of substance so instead of 1 mole just you place 1 gram that is the only difference we have okay so unit i'll write down here unit of specific heat capacity is joule per gram kelvin because it is defined for for 1 gram unit mass of substance clear okay fine so if i write down the heat exchange whether it is total heat capacity or molar heat capacity or specific heat capacity we can write c uh i'll write down this way dq is the heat change we have is equals to we can write c dt is equals to we can write n number of moles cm dt m is the mass cs dt okay change in heat you need to find out that is delta q if you need to find out so for that you need to integrate the given expression integrate and integrate this so what you will get delta q is equals to c delta t is equals to n c m delta t is equals to m c s delta t now this i have written and we can only write this we can write this only in one condition what is that condition please tell me the condition is that specific heat or any heat capacity c that you have right this we can write only when only when heat capacity whether it is specific or molar molar heat capacity is independent of temperature independent of temperature which is mostly the condition okay heat capacity generally it is independent of temperature we don't have much effect on heat capacity with temperature but sometimes what happens we have relation of c with temperature given okay in the question so if it is given then that expression you need to put over here and then you need to integrate if it is not given then we'll assume that heat capacity is independent of the temperature term over here clear finish acha now you see calculation we are doing under heat only everything right calculation of heat capacity what could be 
the possible value of heat capacity under different different condition okay so possible value of heat capacity suppose uh, mm, we have suppose first process i am assuming we have suppose isothermal process isothermal process i want you to consider i want you to consider this expression uh, that is delta q is equals to c delta t okay delta q is equals to c delta t this expression we need to consider so if the process is isothermal what is the value of delta t could you tell me what is the value of delta t isothermal process delta t is zero and when delta t is zero what is the value of c c is nothing but infinity this expression right this could be the possible value of c in isothermal process right okay similarly if we are assuming adiabatic process what is the condition of adiabatic process delta q equals to 0 so we'll have here delta q equals to 0 which means when q is 0 c is also 0 okay so depending upon the process the value of c could be anything from 0 to infinity okay third one you see this is a range we have isochoric what is isochoric process constant volume So write down at constant volume. At constant volume, the heat exchange that is uh, delta Q is nothing but. delta u of the system this we are writing it down writing it down uh with the help of first law of thermodynamics if you remember a bit of because we haven't discussed this but we will discuss this so you see first law of thermodynamics the expression is what we have delta u is equals to q plus w right so this w would be zero because we know it is pdv right this w would be zero if volume is constant this is zero q is equals to delta u we have right so at constant volume this is the relation we have so c is equals to what we can write acha lot stands for first law of thermodynamics okay we'll discuss it i'm just taking the reference of it okay i'm just taking the reference of it we'll discuss after some time the first law of thermodynamics okay you have to keep this in mind at constant volume the internal energy change is nothing but the change in heat content of the system correct so the heat capacity c is equals to we can write uh delta q by delta t or we can also write it as dq by dt dq is nothing but du so it is du by dt it is a heat 
capacity at constant volume. Since the volume is constant here, so we write C as CV. CV is equals to DU by DT. Remember, this is for one mole, right? For one mole, CV is the heat capacity at constant volume. It is the molar heat capacity we have, okay? CV is the molar heat capacity at constant volume, since we have taken one mole over here. Done? Done? Okay. Achha. Now the next one is we have isobaric process. Isobaric process. Isobaric process, as we know, delta P is equals to zero. Pressure constant, delta P is zero. So molar heat capacity, molar heat capacity at isobaric process is represented by Cp. Okay, that was Cv, this one is Cp. And dq, when the pressure is constant, dq is nothing but dh over here where H is the enthalpy. It is the definition of enthalpy basically. What is this? Enthalpy is the heat content of the system of the system at constant pressure. This is the definition of enthalpy. We will discuss enthalpy also later. So in this case, Cp is equals to dH by, or I'll write down this way, wait. The general formula is dQ by dt, but this is at constant pressure. So dQ becomes dH at constant pressure, so dH by dt. So the formula is Cp is equals to dh by dt. And this also we have at constant pressure, one mole we are considering. How? We won't get du by dt. Pressure is constant. So dq in first law becomes dh, first of all. The definition is that only. So dh is equals to du plus pdv we can write. But we are concerned with dq. So dq is dh only, so that is it. You don't, uh, you know, Required here first law of thermodynamics. Yes. Yeah, so this is the, um, 
what we say enthalpy change and cp cv relation we have we'll come back again to this cp cv relation very important this one is also right we'll come back to this point again after first law of thermodynamics okay the cp cv calculation we'll see for ideal gas for after first law of thermodynamics right so before going into first law of thermodynamics we have another thermodynamic term that we need to understand and that is the internal energy write down the third thermodynamic term which is internal energy represented by capital u or capital e both you can take capital u or capital e internal energy correct so the internal energy of any system is what internal energy is the sum of all kind of energy basically we can talk about kinetic energy we can talk about potential energy we can talk about chemical energy as well basically internal energy we define at the micro level like suppose you have a, a cylinder in which the gaseous particles are present so we are considering the energy of the gaseous particle the internal energy right but we also consider all kind of energy of the gaseous particles we can talk about kinetic energy potential energy chemical energy of the gaseous particles okay kinetic energy is what means all kind of energy you add whatever energy are possible and you can think of like for example kinetic energy could be translational rotational you know um, all these kinetic energy possible potential energy is what it is because of the height right because of you know height or we can say the position of the particles chemical energy is what bond making bond breaking uh, all the nuclear reactions are there so all kind of reactions we can consider over here everything whatever it is possible okay so this is the internal energy of the system okay what is internal energy internal energy is a state function right and what is a state function state function could you tell me what is a state function state function is what does not depend upon path right so it is independent of path right okay right that's the state function it depends mainly upon temperature right internal energy depends mainly upon temperature okay i'll come back to this point again now you see one thing here have you seen this formula du is equals to n cv dt have you seen this formula first time so you haven't done this in physics you haven't seen acha okay let it be then this chapter you are done in physics thermodynamics acha that's why okay anyways let it be okay <clears throat> right see i can give you this expression in a simpler way okay but the thing is you won't understand the actual thing if i simply give you the you know expression in a simple way so if you try to understand the actual thing over here you need to go from this expression you see kinetic energy we know it is a function of only temperature right it depends upon temperature similarly potential energy is the function of we can say volume 
Why volume? Because if volume is less, contraction is there, molecules are close, right? So they can have more interaction, which affects the potential energy. But if the volume is high, the molecules are far apart, again, the potential energy will be different, right? So potential energy is a function of volume. It depends upon the volume of the molecule of, this, of the you know, system, right? Because that will affect the relative distance of the molecule, okay? So what we can say, this U, internal energy U, is the function of temperature and volume. Is it fine? So we have two variables on which internal energy depends. Mostly it is temperature because volume change we do not have over there. But we can discuss with these two examples. Now, if you find out the change in internal energy, du, this, you, this would be dou u by dou t at constant volume into dt plus dou u by dou v at constant temperature into dv. This we can write. This expression, you don't have to think about it. Okay, it is not there in the syllabus. This we call it as Euler's formula. E-U-L-E-R-S, Euler's formula. Once again, okay, Euler's formula. Euler's formula we use when a variable, independent variable depends upon more than one variable. Then in order to find out the change in this variable, we use this formula. Once again, I'll discuss, right? So do is the, this do is the, do means partial derivative. It means partial derivative. You don't have to think about it, right? You won't get any questions on this, partial derivative. What is partial derivative? We are differentiating u with respect to t keeping V constant. That is what the meaning of this. Differentiation of U with respect to T keeping V constant into DT. Differentiation of U with respect to V keeping T constant into DV. This is what the Eilers formula we have. Clear now? D by DX is complete derivative. There's no partial derivative into this. D by DX we use when there is only one independent variable and one dependent variable, correct? When we have only one independent variable, then we use d by dx, differentiation. Clear now? Yes, tell me. Okay. Now you see, I'm taking for n moles or let it be, I'll just, I'll just introduce n in the last. So we have du is equals to what is dou u by dou t? At constant volume into dt And the second part of this we have dou u by dou v at constant temperature into d v. What is this term dou u by dou t? Could you tell me? Just now we did dou u by dou t is nothing but C v when volume is constant. So C v dt it is and it is plus the same expression we have dou u by dou v at constant temperature into d v. Is it clear? Just go back and check du by dt is equal to cv we have done. Okay, so change in internal energy. No, in terms of calculation, there is no change. 
It just means we have partial derivation. That is it. We are differentiating one with respect to the other variable, keeping the other variable constant. Right. In terms of calculation, we don't have any difference. Definition wise, we have difference. Do we use for partial derivative and D is for complete derivative. Clear? Do you by do T also is me like means change in internal temperature divided by the change in internal energy divided by the change in temperature. Du by dt also means the same thing. Right? So calculation wise, the answer that you get will be same, but we use do only to represent the partial derivative. That is it. All the you know, method of differentiation you can apply for do also. Correct. So for n number of moles, what we can write? For n moles, we can write du is equals to n cv dt. This is for one mole. So for n mole, we will multiply by n do u by do v at constant temperature into dv. Tell me, anyone has any doubt till here? If you are not getting Euler's formula, you can skip that. That is not in our syllabus. Okay. Clear? Could you, could you speak, any one of you? Could you respond, all of you? Done? No doubt here? Clear? Okay. Now you see, what is this term? This is important here. This is the change in internal energy. If they ask you to find out the change in internal energy, you need to do this. And I'm sure you have never seen this kind of formula. You've done this chapter in school. Yes, have you seen this formula? No, you must have seen du is equals to ncvdt, right? Have you seen that or oh, that also you haven't seen? Achha, maybe some of you have seen, some of you haven't seen. Anyways, so you see actual, oh fine, maybe it was deleted, so fine, let it be. So actual change in internal energy is this. This is what you need to find out in order to, uh, you know, calculate the change in internal energy. Okay. Now this term, this term that is written over here, this do u by do v, this is called the internal pressure of the system. Internal pressure of the system. If it is a gas, then it is the internal pressure of the gas. Internal pressure. Okay. How it is internal pressure? Okay. You cannot, you know, accept this. It's just because I'm saying you should not accept this, right? You can understand this term, how it is the pressure actually. You see, U is what? We have basically U by V. If you look at the dimension here, U by V dimension, correct? U is what? Internal energy. Internal energy is energy itself. So we can write down this as pressure into volume. Why? Because we have U plus PV, you know, work done and this. So dimension of this and this must be same. So U, you can replace with PV. That's what I have done. Just to understand this. Okay, U plus PV. Divided by V, we already have V and V will get cancelled, we'll have pressure. Means this expression, do U by do V at constant temperature represents the internal pressure of the system. Clear? Now, if you 
apply this like if you try to find out the change in internal energy for ideal gas for ideal gas what is the internal pressure in ideal gas p internal in ideal gas is what we know in ideal gas there is no interaction or everything you forgot or what do we have internal pressure in ideal gas no we do not have last chapter only we had discussed we do not have internal pressure so p internal would be zero if we are considering ideal gas so p internal zero means what do u by do v is equals to zero this means the change in internal energy here if you find out du is equals to we have n cv dt this is the formula we have right so if you memorize this formula simply du is equals to n cv dt you must take care of that this is applicable for only ideal gas this formula and mostly we will be dealing with ideal gas only hence this formula is given in the book du is equals to ncv dt correct this is one case another case is what suppose we are considering real gas real gas in in rigid container what do you mean by rigid container real gas in rigid container dv is equals to 0 dv is equals to 0 so again you see this if you substitute in the previous expression what we get again du is equals to n cv dt because dv becomes zero isn't it correct is this correct correct it means what this formula we can use for ideal gas we can also use for real gas but real gas under what condition when the container is rigid if the container is not rigid then the formula is the previous one that i have done in the previous page you have to use that formula in order to find out the change in internal energy clear what denominator no 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 you see the term is this the second term is this do u by do v at constant temperature into dv this you cannot put at zero because this is a different term it is change in volume obviously but it is the change in internal energy with respect to volume So dv will substitute over here and hence it is zero correct okay what is uh, like 
I am not getting your issue. I think it's if I turn off the video, is it fine then? How about this? Okay. I think uh, all of you are facing some issue. Could you tell me what is happening? Achha, no issues. Achha. Is it fine now? Achha, I think I need to remove this chat box. Could you see that chat also? Ha, maybe I think some network, if I have, you know, uh, I have seen this issue before also uh, because of some network error, I guess. I don't know. I, I could not figure it out. But anyways, I think if I remove this chat box, you know, then it would be better. Now it's fine. Better. You can raise hand, guys. You can uh, click over there in the raise hand. I will get the you know, answer from your side. Then It's better now if I place it here. Huh. So we'll remove it then. If it is required, I'll open the chat box. Otherwise, I'll close it. It's fine now. Okay, understood. Okay, so uh, correct. So we have done this. So always keep this in mind. You see one thing, du is equals to ncvdt. What is cv over here? It is the molar heat capacity at constant volume. Correct? Listen to me very carefully here. Molar heat capacity at constant volume. Correct? We haven't applied any condition of constant volume in this expression. You see, we got this expression here but we haven't applied any condition of constant volume. Just we differentiate this partial differentiation and we got this, correct? So this formula that we are getting here, du is equals to ncvdt. It is not at all necessary that it is applicable only for constant volume process. No, are you getting my point? Since we haven't applied the condition of constant volume, this formula is applicable for all processes, whether the volume is constant or not. For all processes. Generally, it is a you know a misconception students has. Since we are writing down CV here, which is for constant volume, so this formula we can use only when the volume is constant. No, it is applicable for all processes if ideal gas is there or if real gas is there with rigid container. Did you understand this? Always keep that in mind. DU is equals to NCVDT. Okay. This is also applicable for all processes with these two things. Okay. So we had discussed work done. We had discussed heat, we had discussed uh, internal energy. Based on this, we uh, will have a law and we call it as the first law of thermodynamics. Write down all of you the heading. Real gas, uh, so we have discussed know this. What if gas is real or in rigid container? Real in rigid container, we can use du is equals to ncvdt. That is the second case we have. Real and rigid container, we can use that. Okay, write down the heading. First law of thermodynamics.
In short, we write it as FLOT, plot. First law of thermodynamics. Correct. This law is completely based on the conservation of energy. Conservation of energy. Correct. So suppose we have state one. And from this, you want to go to a state two. Correct. There are many different ways. Here I am assuming the internal energy is UI and internal energy is UF, final initial. <clears throat> So how this change in state is possible? There are various processes by which change in state is possible. We can have isobaric, isothermal, adiabatic, you know, isochoric, many different processes we have. In which what we do, either we allow heat to flow in to the system, we can allow heat to flow in, or we can take heat outside the you know, system, or we can work done on the system, or system does some work. All these possibilities are there in order to change the state. Yes or no? Right. Any object, any system, if you want to change the state of the system, you can do any one of these four things, correct? Either you will do some work on the system or you allow system to work, right? Or you give some energy from outside or you take energy from the system out. Any one thing you can do. So what condition I'm taking here, you see, I'm assuming Q amount of Q amount of heat absorbed by the system by the system and W is the work done W is the work done on the system since we have work done on the system internal energy decreases or increases U, internal energy increases. Correct. So the final internal energy is UF is equals to, we had some initial internal energy UI. And in this you have given Q amount of it and work done on the system is also positive so plus W. This is the relation we have, energy we have conserved. We have this internal energy, you're given Q amount of it and work done on the system. So Q plus W you need to add. This total becomes the final internal energy. The UF minus UI, we are writing it as delta U is equals to Q plus W. So this is the first law of thermodynamics we have expression. Just a change in internal energy. Okay. One more condition you see. I'll go to the next page. Copy this down first. Okay. Now the same uh, condition I am taking, Q amount of heat is absorbed. Q amount of heat absorbed and work done, work done by the system.
work done by the system. So what we can do? Uf is the final internal energy is equals to Ui and Q amount of heat is absorbed by the system. But W amount of work is done by the system means the internal energy will decrease. So minus of W I write down work done by the system is this. So what we can write delta U is equals to Uf minus Ui right is equals to Q minus W and hence we can write Q is equals to delta U plus W. This is our expression we have. Expression right. So delta U plus W when you write down this expression this is work done by the system. That is the only difference we have and when you write down this expression which is delta U is equals to is equals to Q plus W. This W is the work done on the system. On the system. Is it clear? Just one second guys, just hold on. Yeah. Done. Now you see two, three things you can conclude from this. Conclusion. Suppose we have a process, any process, and in the process, the change in internal energy is zero. So we are assuming different, different conditions and based on the condition, what is the result we have? That is what we are going to understand. So for example, if we are taking a process in which delta U is zero, for example, if you have a cyclic process. So we know in case of cyclic process, delta U is zero, right? So delta U is zero means DQ plus DW equals to zero. So DQ is equals to minus DW. Or we can also write this as plus dq equals to minus dw. Plus dq means what? Positive energy means energy absorbed, energy is taken, is given to the system, right? So we can write down here system absorbs energy, absorbs energy. 
plus dq means correct and minus dw means work done on the system or by the system work done by the system means if you have any process in which the change in internal energy is zero then two possibilities are there one is if the system absorbs energy equal amount of work done by the system you can also understand this theoretically you don't have to go for the mathematical expression like this you have a system and the system does not wants to change its internal energy means there should not be any heat absorbed net heat absorbed by the system suppose if it takes 10 joule of heat if it takes then it has to work 10 joule out so that the internal energy remains constant is it clear yes that is what the mathematical expression we have plus dq equals to minus dw we can also have the another possibilities what is the another possibility if we can write plus dq equals to minus dw then why can't we write minus dq is equals to plus dw can we write this and what do you mean by this expression minus dq is equals to plus dw how do you you know this equation that i have written minus dq is equals to plus dw how do you write down this in a sense in a sentence right the amount of heat released by the system which is negative so this we can write the amount of heat released by the system by the system this is equals to work done on the system logically also you can understand if the system is absorbing heat right system is releasing heat suppose like this 10 joule of heat it is it is releasing then 10 joule of work you need to do from outside so that the delta e won't change hence the expression we have correct so when du is equals to 0 this two possibility we may have just let me put this in the charge charge then acha the second point if wd work done is zero then what you can write we can write du is equals to dq this is what we can conclude so when there is no work done if the internal energy increases means plus dq plus d correct or minus du q minus du so what we can say the change in internal energy or we can say the increase in in internal energy is equals to heat absorbed by the system or released by the system heat absorb or heat release avan uh, second i'll go back to that we can say if internal energy increases then heat absorbed by the system
and if internal energy decreases then heat released by the system copy this down i'll go back Ah, done. Okay. Acha, what is the third condition we can apply over here? Anybody? Could you tell me? What is the third condition we can take? DW zero we have taken. Delta U zero we have taken. Another one is what? When DQ is equals to zero, there is no exchange of energy. Adiabatic process. right dq is equals to zero means what adiabatic process no exchange of energy so what we can write du is equals to dw so it depends upon internal energy depends upon whether work done by the system or on the system if we have work done on the system on the system means what dw greater than 0 which further means du greater than 0 which further means internal energy u increases if you have work done by the system dw less than 0 du less than 0 internal energy decreases this is the three condition you can think of done okay so this is it for first law of thermodynamics one question we'll discuss on this try this question guys the gas contained a cylinder fitted with with a frictionless piston expands against against a constant pressure constant pressure 
one atmospheric from 4 liter to 10 liter in this process in this process it absorbs 800 joule energy we need to find out delta u delta u is equals to what try this question Yes, so what is the answer you got? 192, 190, 140, see what the wide range of answers you're getting. No one um, is getting the correct answer. Archit is close, but not correct. 794, no. Correct answer is around uh, 200 something, 213 to 14 approximately. See what happens here. No, one second. A gas contained a cylinder fitted with a frictionless piston expands against a constant pressure, this. So what is the work done in this process? Could you tell me? The work done is equals to minus P external delta V, since it says against a constant pressure, right? Means what? It is irreversible. So we can apply P external into delta V, correct? So that would be the negative sign, uh, you let it be, pressure is one, dV is 10 minus four, and we are getting six ATM liter, six ATM liter. Achha, I think, uh, uh, yeah, I think one of the answer is correct that you have given because when data is, I have changed here, correct. Six ATM liters. So we have to convert this in the Joule, correct? So minus six into, uh, what we say minus six into 100, zero, sorry, 101.325 zero, one Joule. Okay, this is one thing. 
W we got absorbs 800 joule of energy. So Q is what? Q is plus 800 joule. Correct? We use the expression of work done by the system that is delta U is equals to delta Q plus W that is 800 plus what is this value we are getting? Six zero seven something we are getting negative. So one ninety three, right? Huh? Correct only. So one ninety three approximately we are getting one ninety two point something is the answer. How did you get six zero seven? Acha the value. Okay, fine. Yeah. Ah, that appro approximation you can do, Arshit, depending upon the options, what options are given. When the options are closed, you need to take the exact value in June. Okay, clear? Just a second. Okay, now next thermodynamic term we have, you see, is enthalpy. Heading all of you write down, enthalpy. Enthalpy is represented by H. Definitions write down. It is the heat content of the system Heat content of the system at constant pressure. Constant pressure. So du is equals to what? The first law of thermodynamics, dq plus dw, right? At constant pressure, what we can write? Simply we can write this as du is equals to dq W is PV, so D PV here. Yeah, 192, 193 approximately. I haven't calculated that. Okay, so 192 you can consider as correct answer for the previous one. Okay, so at constant pressure, at constant pressure, we can write DU is equals to DQ, P is constant. We can take this outside PDV. Right? So this is the heat content DQ at constant pressure we have. Right? I missed one negative sign over here. W is minus PV, no? So negative sign. So here we have minus PDV. Okay? So what is DQ? DQ at constant pressure is equals to DU plus PDV. At constant pressure, we know the heat content of the system is enthalpy. So this DQP is nothing but the DH of the system. 
तो डी एच इज इक्वल टू डी यू प्लस पी डी वी दिस इज द मैथमेटिकल डेफिनेशन ऑफ इंथेल्पी दैट इंथेल्पी इक्वल टू इंटरनल एनर्जी प्लस प्रेशर वॉल्यूम वर्क डन ओके डन this is important okay i'll come back to this equation again you will get a lot of questions on this okay now enthalpy you see enthalpy is a function of pressure and temperature mainly mainly depends upon pressure and temperature only right so the change in enthalpy again we are using the eulers formula here it is it is do h by suppose i am writing down here do t keeping the other variable that is pressure constant into dt what should be the other expression here could you tell me do h by by what do p keeping temperature constant into dp correct do h by do t at constant pressure if you go back and see i have told you that this is cp dt this is cp into dt if you have n number of moles So N C P D T plus Do H by Do P at constant temperature into D P. This is the overall change in enthalpy we have. The actual formula is this. Now we can apply conditions on this, and we can get the reduced form of this particular change in enthalpy. Okay, like we had in case of D U. Actual formula is this. this is this formula is applicable for all process for all process all condition for all process all condition One second, Rojita. I'll go back. second line is u this is u only yeah okay this is for all condition now if you look at the condition of ideal gas now this is the actual change in enthalpy we have 
Now we can apply conditions into this. Since we will be dealing mostly with ideal gas equation, so we'll apply the condition of ideal gas. So for ideal gas, what we can write? H is equals to U plus PV. This is the enthalpy formula we have. And we know this internal energy mainly depends upon the temperature because pressure is already constant for enthalpy, right? So U is a function of temperature only, pressure is not changing, correct? And this PV is also we can write NRT for ideal gas. Gas will have, so PV is also NRT we can substitute, right? So overall what we can say? For ideal gas, enthalpy is only a function of temperature for ideal gas. This is only for ideal gas, guys. Okay, only for ideal gas. However, it depends upon pressure, temperature, number of moles also. Mainly it is pressure and temperature. So H is a function of temperature for ideal gas. And hence, if you write down this, do H by do P. What do you mean by this expression? T, what do you mean by this? Just frame a sentence for this particular expression which is written. It is the derivative of H with respect to P keeping T constant, isn't it? Yeah, that also we can say, internal pressure. So for ideal gas also internal pressure is zero or simply the definition of this expression is what? Derivation of, derivative of H with respect to P keeping T constant. So P is already a constant here or we can also say it is the internal pressure of the molecules. This is equals to zero for ideal gas. No, it is internal volume. Once again, guys, DP we have no. So it is internal volume. That also we can take it as zero because internal volume is what? Is negligible for gaseous, for ideal gas molecules. So zero. Or we can also say this equals to zero for dou H by dou V at constant T. This is internal pressure. This is internal pressure. So both will be zero over here. Okay. So if I substitute this in the previous expression, dH is equals to we get N Cp dt. Clear? So again, you see dH is equals to NCPDT is applicable for all process for ideal gas. Process is not a constraint here. Constraint is the gas should be ideal. Don't get confused that CP is written here molar heat capacity at constant pressure, it means we can apply this only when the pressure is constant. No, it is applicable for all processes. This formula we can also apply for real gas, but the condition for real gas is what? Real gas at constant pressure. real gas at constant pressure, dP is equals to zero. And hence we can substitute this. We get dH is equals to NCP dT. So for real gas also it is applicable, but the condition is the pressure must be constant.
Correct? Understood? Okay. Now, another expression we are going to see. See, thermodynamics is all about conditions. Okay, you have one expression. And in the question also, one of those conditions will be given. So you need to understand that how do we apply conditions in a given expression? What we can conclude under a given condition? Okay. Fine. See, we have this expression dH is equals to du plus PdV plus PdV. Correct. Can we divide both sides? Can we divide by dt? No problem with this. Yeah. What, what is dH by dt? What is dH by dt? Anybody? What is dH by dt? N into Cp. Very good. So N into Cp is equals to N into Cv plus N Correct. So we can write what we can write CP minus CV is equals to R. Easy derivation. Clear? Okay. For any number of moles, it is possible. That is one thing. Another formula of CP by CP and CV is the ratio of CP by CV, we call it as gamma. Gamma is Poisson's ratio. This is the formula. We'll use this later on. We'll use this to write it down. One of the formula is this. What is this CP and CV? Is it molar or is specific? CP and CV, molar or is specific? It is molar heat capacity. Okay. No, 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 it's not. That is there. So what is that symbol? Yeah. What is that symbol? This is gamma. We call it as gamma. Okay, sir. This is gamma. Poison's ratio, we call it as. Okay. Now on this, you see one question they asked in NEET exam, not in J, but for J point of view, I'm sorry, for J point of view also, it is important. What was that question? I'll show you. Sure. 